Panelimize hiç ara vermeden devam edeceğiz. Bundan sonraki oturumumuzda yatırım bankacılığı, risk sermayesi fonları, kitle finansmanı, melek yatırımcılık ve yenilikçiliğin finansmanı konularını ağırlıklı olarak konuşacağız. Hazine Müsteşarlığı Mali Sistemle İlişkiler ve Kambiyo Genel Müdürü Ali Arslan moderatörlük edecek sıradaki panelimize. Bu panelin konukları ise Türksel Grup Finans Genel Müdür Yardımcısı Murat Doğan Erden, SPK Kurumsal Yatırımcılar Daire Başkanı Esra Ada Mural, Fongogo Kurucu Ortağı ve CEO'su Liz Westerlein, International Investment Bank CEO'su Abed Al Zira olacaklar ve konuklarımızı sahneye davet ediyoruz. Buyurunuz lütfen. İyi günler and a very very warm welcome to this eighth and penultimate session of the um, Istanbul Finance Summit. We are talking about investment banking, venture capital funds, crowd financing, angel investments, innovation and finance. This topic has two aspects. On one hand, investment banking, venture capital funds, crowd financing, angel investments, innovation finance are all affected by innovations in finance. On the other hand, they all provide sources of finance for innovation. The panel will look at innovative methods of finance in the above mentioned categories. It will explore which of these categories finance um, uh, Uh, uh, categories are best used to finance innovation and what respective risk um, reward criteria there may be. The panel will lastly touch on innovation finance in emerging markets and cross-border aspects thereof. We have a great panel, we have very little time, so we will first have short introductory um, statements by everybody uh, of about four minutes, then we'll have a quick discussion to interact amongst ourselves questions and a short summation. So I'm trying, to, I've been instructed to, to be on for less than an hour, I'll do my best. Um, the panel is, um, thank you to the organizers for putting together such a stellar panel. We have Mr. Ali Aslan, General Director of Financial Relations and Exchange and the Secretariat of the Treasury of Turkey. Um, we have, secondly, we will have Ms. Eza Adavudal, Head of Corporate Investors Department, Capital Markets. Then we will have, and we're very lucky and fortunate, to have Mr. Murad Dogan Erden, who is the Group CFO of Turkcell, which is, as we all know, a very important company in Turkey. And also, I've been told you are one of the key and most valued and important supporters of the Istanbul Finance Summit. Thank you. Um, and then we have, um, and we're very, very privileged to have um, somebody from GCC. We have, we have Abid Al Zira. He's the CFO and um, on, on, on, and on the board of the International Investment Bank in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Masal um, sir. And then, uh, lastly, but not at all, at least, we have um, uh, Miss Louise Westerlin from Sweden. And she's the co-founder and CEO of, uh, of Von Gogo um, in Turkey um, uh, and is an expert, an absolute expert in crowd financing and we're waiting with a bated breath on your statements. So first of all, um, Mr. Ali Aslan, you will talk to us about how the Turkish Treasury Department encourages and regulates financing of innovation and um, we, look, we, are, we are looking forward to hearing from you. Teşekkürler Cornelia. Herkese hayırlı akşamlar diliyorum. 5. İstanbul Finans Zirvesi'nin e, ülkemiz için ve e, finans alanında bütün dünya için hayırlı sonuçlara vesile olmasını temenni ediyorum. Aynı zamanda da bu zirveyi e, düzenleyen, e, emeği geçen herkese e, teşekkürlerimi ve tebriklerimi sunuyorum. E, yenilikçiliğin finansmanı ya da yenilikçi finansman e, yeni olarak düzenleyen, hem ülkemizde hem de dünyada konuşulan konulardan. Bildiğimiz gibi COBİ'lerin, küçük işletmelerin, başlangıç erken aşama işletmelerin en büyük sorunları e, hayatları boyunca karşılaştıkları finansmana erişim e, oluyor. Ülkemizde yapılan anketlerde de, e, dışarıda yapılan anketlerde de hemen hemen benzer oranlarda sonuçlara rastlıyoruz. E, yenilikçiliğin finansmanı denince biraz daha iş zorlaşıyor. Çünkü ee, yeni teknoloji üzerine çalışan, yeni bir şeyler yapmak isteyen e, işletmeler, girişimciler bunu finans etmekte zorlanıyorlar. Haliyle normal olarak çünkü geleneksel finansman sistemimizde bizim 
e, bir teminat gösterilmesi gerekiyor. Yeni kurulan işletmelerin, e, genç e, üniversite mezunlarının, yeni iş yapmak isteyen insanların da bunu karşılaması haliyle mümkün olmuyor. E, bu çerçevede baktığımız zaman e, hazine müsteşarlığı olarak biz iki önemli düzenleme yaptık. Birincisi melek yatırımcılarla ilgili olarak, e, business angels'larla ilgili olarak bireysel katılım sermayesi kanunu çıkardık. Burada e, özellikle başlangıç ve erken aşama işletmelerin finansmana erişimini kolaylaştırmak için e, lisanslama e, modelini geliştirdik. Bireysel katılım yatırımcılarını yani melek yatırımcıları lisanslıyoruz, akredite ediyoruz. E, belli kriterler getirdik. E, tecrübeli yatırımcı, e, gelir veya servete sahip yatırımcı kriterlerini getirdik. Bunları karşılayanları lisanslıyoruz. E, bunların da yatırım yapabilecekleri işletmelerle ilgili yine belli kriterlerimiz var. Mesela işte bir yıl içinde en fazla 1 milyon TL yatırım yapabilirler gibi. Bunun dışında e, bu tür düzenlemelerimiz var. Biz bu düzenlemeleri yaparken belki söylemem gereken önemli, önemli şeylerden birisi, bunu sektörle sürekli görüşerek diğer kamu kurum kuruluşları ve özel sektörle istişare şeklinde yaptık. Onlarla hala aynı istişarelerimizi sürdürüyoruz. Ee, bununla birlikte Melek Ağlar e, kurulmasının yolunu açtık. Bu zaten vardı. Bunları biz hazine olarak akredite ettik. Yine belli kriterler getirdik. Bütün amacımız burada. Ee, sağlıklı bir sistemin kurulmasını e, gerçekleştirmek, güvenilir bir e, sistemin kurulması. E, çünkü güven e, bütün işlerde olduğu gibi e, finansal piyasalarda da e, yatırımlarda da en önemli unsur olarak karşımıza çıkıyor. E, biz burada e, ortak yatırım imkanını da getirdik melek yatırımcılarımıza, onu da söylemem gerekiyor. Yani iki ya da daha fazla yatırımcımız, melek yatırımcımız bir araya gelirse, 2 milyon TL'ye kadar yatırım yapabilirler beraberce. Bir ikinci hızlı gitmek zorundayım. Soru cevap faslında belki daha fazla açabiliriz, konuşabiliriz. Yine girişim sermayesinin desteklenmesi anlamında, yani kurumsal olmayan yatırımcılar, melek yatırımcılar biliyorsunuz, Kurumsal manada da girişim sermayesi fonları desteklenmesi anlamında hazine müsteşarlığı olarak hazine müsteşarlığına 500 milyon TL'ye kadar üst fonlara kaynak aktarma imkanı sağlayan kanun çıktı. Ve aynı zamanda ikinci yönetmeliğini de bakanlar kurulu kararını da hazırladık çıktı. Hatta 1 Ağustos itibariyle bu konuyla ilgili olarak ilana da çıktık. Burada bütün yapmak istediğimiz girişim sermayesi, girişimcilik, yatırımcılık ekosistemini bütün unsurlarıyla güçlendirmeye çalışmak, melek yatırımcılarımızın exit stratejilerine yardımcı olmak, sisteme yeni oyuncuların girmesine katkı sağlamak ve sistemin sağlıklı bir şekilde kamu yardımlarının ya da kamu sermayesinin burada kaldıraç etkisinden faydalanarak girişim sermayesi sisteminin, yenilikçi girişim sermayesi sisteminin ülkemizde gelişmesine katkı bulunmak. Burada keseyim istersen Kornelia. Soru cevap kısmında devam ederiz. Teşekkürler. Thank you very much. This was most enlightening and thank you also especially for keeping to time. I'm just I'm delighted. Um, uh, Ms. Ms. Eza, um, you, you will talk I think about private equity and, and, and your view and um, again it's four minutes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Cornelia. Today I'll briefly talk about the private equity and venture capital investment models in CMB regulations, that is the financing part of the innovation. Firstly, I want to clarify that we don't have a specific distinction between private equity and venture capital in our regulations. So our models, PE, investment funds and investment companies are designed to cover both private equity and the venture capital. What is a private equity firm in CMB regulations? That is the companies that have a growth potential and in uh, need of resources. That can be a corporation or can be a publicly held companies, but only the non-listed shares of that companies. There is no limitation or restriction in terms of sector of the company, size of the company or the investment stage. We have a flexible environment. 
Uh, in both models, you can invest directly or indirectly. You can invest directly being a shareholder or investing in debt securities of debt firms or mezzanine finance. In terms of indirect financing, you can use PE, investment funds and investment companies, securities or SPVs established in Turkey or abroad. Investment company model has legal personality and uh, shares can either be so, uh, sold to public or sold just to qualified investors. We have a slightly, uh, lightly regulated regime in qualified investors model, but we have uh, at least one general partner requirement in the public offering model. Uh, we have min minimum paid in capital requirement of 20 million Turkish liras for the publicly offered model. It's just 5 million Turkish liras for the qualified investors model. Performance fee that's carry uh, can be charged to the uh, funds uh, can be charged to the funds. And in the fund model, uh, we have no legal personality. The sponsor and the manager of the fund will be the Turkish asset management companies licensed by the CMB. Minimum fund commit, uh, commitment amount is 5 million Turkish liras in total, but of course it can be more. Uh, the fund units can only be sold to qualified investors. Again, privileged shares or privileged units issuance regarding the dividend rights and manager rights is possible in our system. So GP units or GP shares can be held in that system. And uh, to be quick, I want to say that both models have several tax advantages in our system. Firstly, earnings of the investment funds and investment companies are fully exempt from corporate tax and uh, that has a withholding tax rate of 0%. This is a very good advantage, I think. And at the investor level, we have also front and back end incentives. In terms of front end incentives, individuals or corporations can reserve private equity funds in order to invest in PE investment companies and investment funds up to 10% of uh, taxable uh, income or tax base and uh, again up to 20% of the equity. If this amount is really invested in PE investment companies and investment funds then it's tax deductible for that year. Uh, for last list, I can give some statistics. We have 12 PE investment companies in Turkey. Six of them are traded on Borsa Istanbul with a market cap of 1.5 billion Turkish liras. Two of them sold to qualified investors and the remaining is either in pre-IPO process or the pre-sale process. Our PE investment fund regulation is a brand new one. It's enacted in uh, 1st of July 2014. So we don't just have an operating PE investment fund in Turkey, but the applications are in process. Thank you very much. That's all for today. Thank you very much. And now, now that we know all the rules, it's important to talk to the people who actually need the finance, who were able to raise the finance, both nationally and internationally. So we are going to Turkcell. Thank you very much. I also like to thank to the Istanbul Finance Summit, the organizers, the governance team, and Dr. Murat Yulek, who has been a great honor to invite him again to the meetings, and to you as well, Cornelia, who is making a great job here to keep everyone on time. So I won't be using much more than four minutes as I have been instructed by you. Uh, let's clarify how we can support the uh, innovative approach in the finance. Uh, we are one of the leading companies in the technology sector, but the technology tech sector has been a key denominator who has been supporting all sectors, including the banking, who are making these innovative approaches or the incentives uh, going into the real life. So uh, when you look at the incentive pr uh, issues, there are so many innovative ideas, but we describe the innovation in the sense it has to turn out to be an economic value. If, the, if any of the innovative ideas cannot create an economic value, then for us it is very difficult to support or clarify whether how much we should support or not. There are many uh, in, uh, rules and regulations change in Turkey, but we still have significant room, even starting on the corporate venture capital ideas as well. And I believe the regulatory issues will be helpful for us to create a culture for the corporate venture capitals. This is one of the areas for the improvement, which I can see. And we are positioning ourselves in the sense the key enabler for accessing the knowledge. 
in order for you to create an innovative idea or being an angel investor, you should first access to the knowledge. You should have the information. So our role as Turkcell is first to have the same level of accessibility to the information. And then it is important how people are using that information. Uh, our role there is we build one of the world's top mobile network in Turkey. Since the establishment of the company, 24 billion Turkish lives. This is a quite an enormous investment for an economy. And it is important, it is not only the mobile, but this has been uh, approved and registered by the world-class uh, statistics. Turkey has the largest coverage for mobile communication. That makes all the innovative ideas or people who makes the, uh, make investments in Turkey have such a capability. That capability we should continue to invest in that one and our next generation is going to be on the fiber side. The second investment for us into the Turkish economy is, going, is related with the education. So it is also to keep people uh, access to the education and right now we have the youngsters who can also apply to our programs and there are 23,000 youngs, youngsters who can access to mobile software written issues. So they have access to the old education programs so they can write the future for us. So let me give the specific projects later on in the next round. Let me finish here. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and really, you, know, it's, it's, you are a driving force behind the growth of Turkey, which is brilliant. Um, now, um, now we're going to, to Mr. Abid al -Sira. And um, it's, it's, I mean, you have a lot of experience in investing in the greater region. You're a privately held investment bank, and it would be great to hear from you, you know, how you look at Turkey and also how sort of Gulf companies overall look at Turkey and that look at financing in Turkey, financing especially innovation in Turkey. Yeah, thank you for, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Thank you for having me in this panel. And uh, thanks to the organizers and the audience, the distinguished audience and participant we have here. Uh, I shall be, no, I don't need, that's okay. No, no, no need, no. I shall be talking about Islamic banking from investment banking uh, point of view, and we'll link it with the uh, innovative finance. Uh, as you are aware, investment banking has traditionally been uh, dominated by leading international uh, banks and investment houses. So for Islamic banks to penetrate this area, it is uh, gonna be very difficult and Islamic banks have to be very innovative in their, think, in their thinking and to be very sharp to be able to penetrate and compete effectively. Uh, you know, Islamic banks have always had restrictions in terms of the industry that they are allowed to invest in and also the, the type of loans that uh, can be obtained from lending banks. So if, if you want to acquire a company, for example, you have to make sure that it is ethical investment. I mean, it has to be Sharia compliant. It's not dealing in alcohol, liquor, uh, gambling, and so forth. And also you need to know the loan, the existing loan on the company's book. So you need to restructure uh, the existing loan. To restructure the existing loan, for example, is you have to sit with the lenders and educate them about how is Islamic uh, finance. So you have to be also innovative in your thinking as how to bring them together. If the company doesn't have a loan, you will eventually need a loan and again, you will have to uh, convince the lenders as the structure and the documentation of that loan. Uh, there have been various challenges that actually worked in favor of the Islamic banks. And these challenges have actually made the banks to be very creative and very innovative in their thinking to structure 
uh, investment products and offer them uh, to the client base they have. Uh, of course, investment banks have certain objectives uh, when presenting these uh, investments. One is the most important is to provide Sharia compliant investment product. Number two, the product has to be very tax efficient. And number three, like I said earlier, is that you have to convince the lenders uh, that the structure of the, the, the loan uh, on that company. And uh, number four is that you have to adhere to regulations in the jurisdiction where you are buying that company. And uh, number five is you have to uh, also gain the confidence of your auditors as well as your regulators, basically the central bank where you are operating. Uh, indeed, Islamic banks uh, have in the p past 15 years been very successful in coming up with innovative investment products which are Sharia compliant, uh, which have also gained acceptance by their clientele base. Because they have been successful, uh, we saw international banks are also following suit, i.e. Uh, producing Islamic uh, or Sharia compliant investment products uh, and offering, offering it to their uh, investors. Uh, this has actually prompted uh, competition between the uh, conventional banks as well as the uh, Sharia compliant banks, which again led to uh, them being creative and innovative in their thinking. Uh, with the rapid involvement of banking in general and the major setbacks that hit the global economy such as the financial tsunami or the financial crisis, Islamic banks, like the conventional banks, had to be also very innovative and to adapt to major changes in the marketplace and in order to survive and to sustain profitability. Thank you very much indeed. So Islamic banking as a tool to finance innovation, but also as an innovative financing tool. Correct. Both. And now we're going to the crowd and the angels. <laughs> Take it away, please. Thank you for that introduction. I'll turn on the speaker. Um, I start off by just uh, briefly introduce crowdfunding for those who are not aware of it. Uh, crowdfunding is essentially um, uh, contributions, small or large, uh, from the crowd for a specific project. That's in, in, a, in, a, in a brief statement. There are different types of crowdfunding uh, verticals. There are uh, so-called donations, rewards, equity, lending, royalty, and niche type of crowdfunding platforms. So, um, Crowdfunding is, and it's something that I typically try to highlight, is that it's more than uh, fundraising. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically fundraising to start with, which for many project donors is one of the most important aspects. Uh, it's also a way to uh, prove a concept, to conduct market research uh, prior to actually roll out uh, a business idea. And thirdly, it's a, it's a form of pre-selling, it's marketing, uh, it's awareness. So that's one of the highlights uh, that I would like to mention, that crowdfunding is more than financing. Um, crowdfunding is one of the most uh, recent alternative uh, financing methods. Uh, having said that, uh, it hasn't been active until the last five years. Uh, it has now, uh, is estimated to reach uh, 9 billion US dollars uh, in the market globally. Um, nearly doubling from last year when it was 5.1 uh, billion dollars. And uh, investment into crowdfunding platforms uh, were uh, at 246 million US dollars um, as, of, as of recently, it has exceeded it. Uh, and then what is Fongolo? 
Uh, Fongogo is uh, localized with Turkish uh, platform registered in Turkey as a company, Anonym Shirket. Uh, it's a localist, uh, rewards-based crowdfunding platform. And basically, it's a form of receiving rewards in return for the contributions given on the website uh, to these projects. Uh, we're aiming to enter into the equity crowdfunding space and also to roll out in the MENA section, in the MENA um, uh, region. Uh, and uh, that's, that's brief about uh, Fongogo. I think one of the questions uh, mentioned here or th that I was supposed to cover is the risks and rewards. So I jump quickly from, the, from that point. And uh, there are a couple of stakeholders here in crowdfunding. And there are, of course, uh, the, the investors. Uh, we're talking about uh, risks in terms from the uh, from the investors' point of view. Uh, we are talking about uh, capital formation, so the business owners who are in need of more capital, and uh, we are also talking about uh, transparency. And this is where I would like to highlight that this is uh, uh, very important, specifically in a market like Turkey and the region. Um, and so transparency, because you see the. the the project owners on the crowdfunding platform, you understand more about the project in detail and where they're coming from. Uh, and it's also real time. And the fourth part here in this framework uh, is, is uh, crowdfunding platforms, the opportunities for them to exist. Um, this is the four points I mentioned here is based on a framework by uh, crowdfund capital advi uh, advisors. Uh, it's, one of our uh, advisors, international advisors, is Jason Best, who, who, uh, who's guiding us with this. And we hope uh, to work both with uh, the likes of the Treasury Capital Markets Board and with companies in order to facilitate uh, the entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship ecosystem rather than uh, sort of uh, working against any other types of uh, capital uh, institutions. You're truly at the spearhead of innovation and at the spearhead of entrepreneurship, which is a very, very exciting space to be. Now, I will just follow up with one question to the one man from the real sector, as I'm a woman who comes from the real sector as well, um, and then we'll open it to the floor. And the one question I'd like to ask you, because you have a broad view um, over the Turkish market, over, over your company, how important, if you look at it, is, is funding for innovation, fu funding sources from Turkey versus funding sources abroad versus going abroad to fund? Uh, here in Turkey, there are two sources of funding, some indirect, some direct mm -hmm. funding capabilities. I believe here in this round as well, we are all discussing about having a capability for the direct sources, and the regulation has done its job to motivate the angel investors or the banks through different uh, incentives. In the meantime, there are companies like ourselves who are also enabling the platform for people to make their innovative ideas, making it in useful in the real life. And there are crowdfunding, I believe, which is still in baby steps in Turkey right now. So international type of source funding is not there yet in Turkey, but there are different platforms which has been established in the past in Turkey where you can make use of the uh, funding. Here the largest banks or the Islamic banks here in Turkey did not facilitate the global practice, I believe. What we have done that I can give an indirect funding is through creating the platform, which is we've been discussing the imbalances of the distribution of wealth. Here, when you look at the Turkish economy, I believe our aim should be, and we are supporting that, to minimize or keep the imbalance, inequality, to access to the knowledge. I'm bringing the knowledge back into the uh, basic because your best return is if you make an investment into the knowledge and the innovative areas, investments are coming from the best use of the knowledge. There we have two platforms. One of them, for example, if you cannot access to the banking sources or crowdfunding, so you have platform like ourselves. We have 200 partners, and these are from sizes of five people to 100. 
those people are in our ecosystem, and if they have any products and services, they can come. And with our marketing capabilities or with our technological capabilities, they can bring it into the market. So they don't need the real financing, but indirectly, that's one of the sources. On the other side, there is a huge women population in Turkey who have significant lack of access to liquidity or funding. There are 70,000 in our system women who can access to indirect sources of funding so they can bring their products and services or ideas into the economy. These are the direct and indirect capabilities in Turkey that I can name right now. Thank you, that's very, uh, that's, that's very fascinating. Now, I've, I, I have the gentleman who keeps me to strict timing sitting right opposite me, so I will kick the cr in that sense. May I ask for two questions, which you, you ask the two questions one after the other. You tell us who you, are, who you want to, to ask a question to, and then the people will, will answer, and the questions need to be very short, because otherwise I'm in trouble. So, so um, who would like to ask a question? I hope I haven't intimidated you yet now. <laughs> ah, yes, Murat Bey. And then, you, and then who would like to ask a second question after Murat Bey? You, okay. I'm assuming no one else asking question, I, I took the floor. It, is, it goes to Abid, and my question is, how is the Gulf region, we know what's happening in Dubai and also in Bahrain, etc. Yes, how is the uh, innovative, uh, let's say, technology-based PEs going in the Gulf region, specifically in Bahrain and in, in Dubai? Is there a specific effort to, let's say, raise funds uh, for you know, technology-based uh, funds? And we will For ask, the, uh, can you hold on the, the question right after it? No, no, you need, we need to ask the two questions in one, so then we... Again, because there was no one asking questions, so I just wanted to, uh, uh, I'm, I was obliged to uh, make a point and ask a quick question. Uh, my name is Onur Takma. C can you just ask a quick question, because we are in time constraint. Okay. Uh, but I need to make an introduction to the question. Mm -hmm. okay, awesome. okay, right. I think uh, both uh, the capital markets board and the treasury has been very modest in putting where we are in terms of private equity regulation in Turkey. First of July is, uh, you know, the new regulation that has come into effect is a game changer. And we've been working as the private industry as well as the regulators over the five years uh, through different uh, platforms in making this regulation. So what we have right now is a global industry standard the regulation. But we have challenges ahead of us. And I think the two questions I have, uh, one to the Treasury, one to the Capital Markets Board, is what we need to put that new regulation and new structures in, in, in, into, into reality and gather assets from local and international uh, investors into, the, into you know, onshore funds. One, one, in addition to the fund of fund side, I think we need uh, the Treasury uh, to invest in like infrastructure funds, Islamic funds that we need to uh, roll out. I think the, the funding from the Treasury should be, uh, should be extended. Do you have a program uh, in mind ex to expand the, the, the 500 million you set aside for the fund of funding? Are you looking to expand that into like infrastructure and other areas, which we definitely need? And from the Capital Markets Board, I think the new regulation is, is global industry standard, but it is, not, it is not tested yet by the institutional LPs, global institutional investors. So. Um, I think, uh, um, uh, are you talking to global institutional LPs? Are they visiting you? Are they, you know, giving you feedback about the, the new reg regulation? Do you believe, is it compliant with their requirements? Because on the asset management side, you're ready to gather assets, but at the end of the day, the LPs are, you know, they need to build confidence that uh, this is a structure that can work. Thank you. Okay, we will first go, we will first go to the Gulf. Yeah. Uh, banks and the GCC, are looking at opportunity, uh, opportunities uh, in the local market, i.e. in the Gulf region, as well as they're also looking at opportunities uh, globally in Europe and the US. Now, the PE ratio is very important, and uh, they want also to make sure that they have a uh, good opportunity with the return, i.e. the risk-adjusted return is very important to the, to the banks. Uh, plus the fact that ba banks tend to uh, 
like to diversify their portfolio in terms of the currency risk, geographical risk, uh, as well as the industry. Uh, I am aware that a number of banks have uh, already uh, come into the Turkish market. Some acquired real estate, some acquired existing uh, private company. Uh, in, in fact, we, we ourselves, we uh, in International Investment Bank, we have looked at a number of opportunities in, in Turkey, and hopefully we will conclude uh, in the near future. Teşekkürler. Biz Hazine Müsteşarlığı olarak üst fonlara kaynak aktarılması ile ilgili mevzuatı yeni tamamladık ve bununla ilgili çağrıya da çıktık. Bundan maksadımız biliyorsunuz belki eksik bilenler olabilir diye kısaca. Yani üst fonlar girişim sermayesi yatırım fonlarını fonluyorlar. Girişim sermayesi yatırım fonları da girişim şirketlerini fonluyorlar. Hem fonluyorlar hem de aynı zamanda girişim sermayesi yatırım fonları bilgi birikim tecrübe anlamında teknik danışmanlık anlamında da hizmet veriyorlar. Yani e, biraz önce bahsi geçti bilgiye erişim noktasında da kurumsal anlamda da melek yatırımcılar da aynı şekilde kişilere hem finansman sağlıyorlar hem bilgiye erişim e, anlamında teknik e, destek hizmeti de sağlıyorlar. Şimdi biz e, üst fonlara kaynak aktarmakla hazine müsteşarlığı olarak daha çok yeni startupların başlangıç erken aşama, büyüme aşamasındaki işletmelerin, teknolojik odaklı işletmelerin önünü açmak, bunları geliştirmek istiyoruz. İlk hedefimiz bu. Ama biz her türlü görüş, düşünce, öneriye de açığız. Yani şimdi yeni başladık bu işle ilgili olarak. Bismillah. Bunda bir mesafe kat, kat edip belli bir tecrübe kazanmak. O söylediğiniz şeylerin önünü daha rahat açabilir. Ama şu an için öyle bir düşüncemiz, çalışmamız yok. Yalnız bizim kendi içimizde her konuyla ilgili genel müdürlüğün, müsteşarlığın içinde çalışmalar oluyor. Yani bir kısmı belki bizde bitiyor, kalıyor. Bir kısmı makama, müsteşarlık, bakanlık makamına arz ediliyor. Ama şu an bu işimizi en güzel bir şekilde yapmak istiyoruz. Bundan sonraki süreçte tabii ki ülkemizin gelişmesine katkı sağlayacak, büyümemizi istikrarlı kılacak. Her türlü çalışmayı yapacağız. Bizim görevimiz zaten. Teşekkür ederim. I have to say that uh, our P investment fund regulation is lightly regulated and flexible environment inspired by international standards and inter industry practices. We have licensed asset management companies in the system, depository in the system and the independent auditors. So we don't think we have a confidence problem and the industry partners confirm that. Thank you. I think, I think we will have time for one more question and then I'm wrapping up, but the question needs to be very short. We have no more question. Excellent. So I can wrap up. <laughs> um, what we've, what we've, what, it was very interesting to, I mean, it was very good to have the perspective of um, the industry and the government and the, the finance and the finance that, and the financiers. Um, and uh, we've seen that the Turkey is, the, the, from, the, from the regulatory side, you've really thought through, you've come out with, new regu with, with a new regulatory framework, especially to address how to finance smaller companies, how to finance startups, and you've got, come up with very good um, view on, on, on, on, on looking at private equity, venture capital. And the good thing is the underlying thing is always it needs to be reliable and it needs to be healthy. And um, you're open to do more later on, but you first want this first round of regulations to set foot and then see where that, where that leads. Um, when we look at Turkcell, which is uh, one of the premier, who is the premier sort of um, uh, new economy company here, um, so to speak. Um, again, we said, you said very clearly, the underlying economic value in terms of what you're investing is, is key. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. And that's how you look at technology, and that's the only sound way to look at um, technology. 
um, and, and, and you, you talked about your efforts in terms of education and, and, and how important sort of your business is because you have such the largest sort of um, um, coverage of, um, of uh, mobile coverage. Then we looked at Islamic banking as a good source of banking, which brings in competition, which brings in innovation. Um, uh, again, you focused, it needs the underlying economics need to work, otherwise nothing makes sense. Um, and and um, you look at Turkey, the, in, the problem is again, you need to look at the industry and you also need to look at the currency issues when you, when you invest outside of GCC. Um, and then we also looked at the new, the sort of the crowd financing, new really innovative ways. And what I th really took away from your, from your um, uh, t uh, intervention was uh, it's, it's more than just financing. Your way of looking at it, it is market research because you, you go so broad. It is also a form of pre-selling. Um, so right now, $9 billion globally of crowdfinancing, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's, going, it's, it's, it's growing. So I think that's what I took away from this session. It's been a great session. I'm sorry to have rushed you so much, but we were running behind. And insurance is important too, so we need to give them the stage. Thank you very much, everybody.